Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about hypertonic saline in hyponatremic patient. We'll do some basic calculation to figure out how much 3% you need for a patient for a given correction and try to get comfortable with these. So let's get started. If you remember 3% is mostly used in treatment of severe hyponatremia to reduce cerebral edema. It's also used for treatment for SAADH if free water restriction doesn't works. 3% contains around 513 milliequivalents of sodium and 513 milliequivalents of chloride. Osmolality of the solution is 1027. In treatment of severe hyponatremia, you have to increase the sodium by 4 to 6 points pretty rapidly to reduce the brain edema. For this, give them 150 cc of 3% saline over 20 minutes and repeat the sodium and see if he needs additional boluses. You have to repeat few boluses till your sodium rises by 4 to 6. If the symptoms don't abate by the time you have increased this sodium level, think about other causes for altered mental status rather than hyponatremia. Use the ABG machine for your sodium estimation as these are more accurate and much more faster. The commonest concern about giving hypotonic saline is rapid correction. So let's calculate if 150 cc of hypertonic saline really results in rapid correction. For discussions, we'll take this 70 kilo person with a total body water of 42 kilos who has 25 liters in ICF and 17 liters in ECF and the sodium is 110. So initial body osmolality is 220 and initial body solute will be 220 multiplied by 42. That's your total body water as your osmolality in ECF and ICF remains the same. That gives you 9240. Now let's add 150 cc of 3% saline. It has around 154 milliosmoles of sodium and chloride ions. So now your total body solute is 9240 plus 154 and your new total body water is 42 plus 0 0.15 liters. And if you divide these two, you'll get the new body osmolality, that's 222.9. So sodium is nothing but half your total osmolality. So that would be 222.9 divided by 2, that gives you 100.4. So giving 150 cc of 3% in a 70 kilo man will increase sodium only from 110 to 111. So giving that 150 cc bolus of 3% saline is completely safe, especially in severe hyponatremia. Now we have to get that sodium up by 5 points. So let's figure out how much of total 3% do we need to get to this number. Let's assume that we need X liter of 3% saline to get to that number. So our new body solute is 9240 plus 1027 multiplied by X. 1027 is the total number of milliosmoles per liter in 3% saline. The new total body water will be nothing but 42 plus X. So if you divide the total solute by total body water, you'll get the new body osmolality. And you, if you have that number, you should be able to get your sodium levels. Here we want our sodium levels to be 115. So you can solve for X using this equation. And this will give you around 527 cc's. So it will take 527 cc's, around half a liter of 3% saline to increase the sodium from 110 to 115 in this person. The amount of 3% needed to raise the sodium by 5 points will depend upon total body water of the individual and initial sodium. Total body water, as you know, depends upon age, weight and gender. And you can find any calculator to figure this out. Since most of the patient in which you are considering 3% have sodium around 100 to 115 range. This does not affect your final number much. You can get a rough estimate of how much 3% you need by multiplying 12.5 into total body water. Therefore, a 50 kilo meal will require 12.5 multiplied by the weight, that's 50, multiplied by 0.6, that's your fraction of total body water in an adult meal. That gives you 375 cc's. You can get a rough estimate of total body water by looking at this figure. An adult male, 60% of the body weight is total body water. In females, it's 
and in elderly it's 50 percent hopefully after all these calculation you would feel more comfortable giving that 150 cc bolus of 3 percent saline to your severely hyponatremic patient anyway you will be checking the repeat sodium after the first bolus before deciding the next bolus in severe hyponatremia this will help your patient more than it will harm so let's go to our SIADH patient at what rate do you want to give that 3 percent to your patient remember we want to increase sodium by maximum of 8 milligrams per liter in 24 hours solving the same equation you get around 850 cc's and if you divide that 850 cc's over 24 hours you get 35 cc's per hour in this 70 kilo person or you can go ahead and use an online calculator as well this is one of the common thing that you'll observe that despite doing perfect calculation and using calculators your sodium does not change as expected your sodium is either too high or too low and this dissuades people from using hypertonic saline here you have to understand few things the calculation or the calculator that you have used is for a closed system it does not include other losses or gains of solute in water in that person the number is supposed to give you a starting point remember your patient is not a closed system but an open system he's possibly eating and drinking and he's losing water and solute through incipient losses urine and stool let's try to understand how the other variables affect your final sodium so we have the same 70 kilo person our initial sodium is 110 our target is 118 in 24 hours and you have calculated that this person will need 850 milliosmoles over next 24 hours and you are giving him hypertonic saline at 35 cc per hour initially your total body solute is 9240 as we calculated before but he's losing around 300 cc in incipient losses and let's say he made one liter of urine and his urine osmolality was 500 milliosmoles per liter we'll keep him npo for now but understand that this will also change our numbers our total body solute now after 24 hour is 9240 850 got added from hypertonic saline and he lost 500 through the urine the new total body water would be 42 that's what we started with 0.85 came from hypertonic saline and he lost 1.3 liters of water 1000 through urine and 300 through incipient losses so your new body osmolality will be total solute by total amount of water that gives you 230 so your final sodium is your osmolality divided by 2 that's 115.4 so you can see that your sodium level next day will depend upon your urine osmolality urine volume incipient losses and PO intake of water and solute what happens if urine osmolality improves this is much more commoner scenario as your patients improve your urine osmolality will tend to improve let's assume that they are making same amount of urine here after the similar calculation you get to a sodium of 117.8 if your urine osmolality improves that means your, if your SIAD is improving the sodium correction will be much faster this is the most common scenario where your urine osmolality improves and that also leads to increased urine production let's say he made three liters of urine and his urine osmolality is now 200 doing the same calculation you find that your sodium is now 120. this example gives an insight into why that sodium corrected so rapidly this is most likely because patient SAADH is improving and he's increasing his urine output and decreasing his urine osmolality so when you see the scenario expect that sodium is going to correct more rapidly you can calculate similar new sodiums if your incipient losses have increased say 600 cc of water try to figure this number out and write in your comment section below another scenario you would like to practice is what happens if patients start drinking more free water so calculate the sodium with the same condition if he drinks 500 cc of water in the next 24 hours therefore to minimize fluctuation and get a better sodium control Try to keep your patient's NPO or minimize free water if possible while on 3%. Monitor your urine osmolality and volume 
and ask your nurse to call you if your patient urine output starts increasing because that might mean that your SAATH is improving and you might have to slow down that hypertonic saline rate. Always error on the lower side for correction of sodium. Rapid corrections while giving appropriate rate of hypertonic saline occurs not because of 3% but because patient's SIADH is improving. This will result in lower ADH and more water in the urine. This results in lower urine osmolality and increased urine output. The other two factors that would result in rapid increase would be if patient is eating a lot of solute or he is having a lot of incipient water losses. In summary, hypotonic saline is given in severe hyponatremia and in patients with SIADH who don't respond much to free water restriction. In severe hyponatremia, 3% saline is safe and hopefully you will get comfortable using this in your patients. In these patients, use boluses of 150 cc over 20 minutes to increase sodium to maximum by 5 milliequivalents per liter and repeat your sodium after each bolus. In SIADH, understand that the rates on the calculators are initial rates only and it needs to be adjusted as your underlying physiology changes or if your patient starts eating or drinking. Rapid correction may occur because of improvement in underlying SIADH. This will be heralded by increased urine production, by eating too much solute or having excessive incipient losses. Stop 3% if your correction is too rapid. Just for fun fact, osmolality of seawater is slightly higher than hypotonic saline and it varies throughout the different oceans. Thank you.